The broadcast is live. And hello, everyone. This is Mateo Cadena and Michael Mondragon. And we're coming to you from Type Thursday, Los Angeles, to celebrate the life of the late Michael Stinson and his amazing influence on our local design community and abroad. I mean, Michael was a legend, right, Michael? Hundred <laughs> percent. No, he was my friend. He was um, uh, also a very influential person in my uh, not only design career, but just you know, uh, as overall, he was uh, so many things to me. He actually is a person who actually got me excited about design again. Um, and uh, unfortunately, is no longer here. But his his legend and his legacy uh, lives on forever. And, and uh, doing things like this, um, I think is only going to extend his legacy because um, we have so much that he gave us that we still have uh, uh, yet to share. And, um, you know, I mean, his teachings um, affected uh, young and old. So uh, he was an amazing person and, and uh, a typography lover. He loved everything about typography. Uh, super. Um, again, I can't. I can't rave about him enough. So, how did he affect <laughs> you? How did you meet uh, Michael? So I met Michael um, when Rachel Elnar had invited me to a Type Ed class and uh, went to General Assembly in downtown LA. Uh, showed up to the Type Ed class. Didn't know really what to expect. I had heard good things about Type Ed from uh, other designers in the community. Uh, as some of you know, I'm uh, co-vice president at AIJLA, and I've been doing a lot of volunteer work with them. So Michael Stinson had an influence on a lot of people in the design community because he was teaching classes all over. And people always raved about how good of an educator he was and like that same sentiment you shared, Michael, of this, he would just get you excited about design again. And there were times where in, I think in anyone's career where you just kind of get bored of it or you feel kind of uh, out of inspiration and lack of creativity. But taking a class with Michael Stinson and taking that type ed class at that time totally revamped my sort of creative core. Uh, Cause the way he, you can see it from this photo here, he was just very like into the work, very into sharing the knowledge about type uh, and design and rhythm and, and relating it to things like music and rhythm um, and setting bars, you know, uh, just like setting your baseline. And it was such a wonderful experience to take that type ed course uh, with Michael and just be touched by that great knowledge. Um, and he's touched so many people in the Type Thursday uh, community. We're a global organization. We have chapters all over the world and people know Michael Stinson from all over the world, from New York to LA. Uh, to London, it's he's had an impact. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, Ross S is Type Ed ongoing. Um, right now, it's it's on hiatus because of uh, his passing uh, last year. Um, but we actively talk about it quite a bit about how can we continue uh, the Type Ed because um, for those who don't know, uh, Type Ed uh, was from what I understand was started um, because the people that were coming to work for um, Michael and Rachel at the time at Ramp Creative, that was their creative agency, uh, they came with, um, like they didn't, actually they, they came to work and they didn't have like the inherent typography skills. Um, so they decided that, hey, there's, a, there's actually something here. We can actually teach this and it's actually, it was almost out of necessity. They had to teach them anyway, so they kind of made classes out of it. Um, and so for me, um, when I found out about their classes, um, I actually, um, I have a, f a funny story that I tell, I tell sheepishly, but, but it's actually a, a, quite a humbling story, but it's also one of the things that, that um, kind of made me kind of rethink things. I arrogantly took there was three classes. There was type one, two, and three. So Michael, um, you know, would, would teach these and it was in downtown LA. And it, as you see here, it's like, there, I have a ton of pictures of him in front of classes and, and he was always, 
um, you know, always teaching. So the type three would have been the most difficult one, but type one uh, would have been the entry level. It's like, you know, kind of like the basics. So uh, I arrogantly, because of my experience, took type three first because I thought, hey, I mean, I want to learn like the best things. And what I found out was that uh, it was a humbling experience. Because as much as I thought I knew, uh, I learned so much in one night, just a two hour class. We dove into InDesign, which I hadn't used in a long time. And I only used InDesign basically to put my JPEGs and tips and to print or send them to a service bureau. And uh, I hadn't ever like typeset in it. Uh, I would go to Illustrator or something like that. but. He if should have in design and you've been typesetting an illustrator. You've been doing it wrong this whole time. hundred <laughs> percent. Oh Michael my Spencer. gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, uh, when I saw what he was doing with it and, you know, he was, uh, designing, uh, for, uh, for Ram creative, he was, uh, they were financials, uh, you know, yearly financial reports, uh, books he was, um, and you can't do that in illustrator. So you had to, you know, have flowing pages and all that stuff. And he was showing like all the capabilities of it to, to scrub type. How, how are people that are writing a book going to do updates and, and make it all dynamic? You know, you know, they were using, there were so many things. So he showed me this whole new world and it was like, it literally got me excited about design again. Uh, Michael, uh, it just, and he was a great teacher in that he he listened but he also was very um so thorough and th so um you know when we got i actually i have right here i have a whole binder full of all the the, the teachings exactly. and it's like they're so thorough and i use these all the time like the very the very first one here is uh, a measurement conversion so he was the one that actually got me to stop doing stuff in inches and go to pikas so yep. because that's and Pika, it, it, that's the way that everything is laid out. And it's like, you know, so 12 over 15, you know, just talking like that is, uh, you know, 12 point, but, uh, you know, 15 letting. So it's like I, I, just how he talked, it, it seemed like like a craftsman, you know, would. And, and when you see the work that he put out, it was so amazing. And uh, this was um, he was very passionate about whiskey. So he would do this whiskey label. Um, uh, class. So I don't know what, what class did you take Mateo? So I took type ed one and type ed two. And I think he kind of did breeze us through some of three a little bit. Cause we had some extra time towards the end of the class. And I totally agree with, uh, <laughs> Ross there. Like I miss the live type crit sessions and I miss those live interactions because this pandemic has forced us all to socially distance. Um, and it's been tough, but glad we're able to like keep this virtual momentum going and the, the love for typography virtually going. I also love that comment from Melissa, uh, such an amazing artist and human being. My, Michael Simpson really was amazing human being above all else. Uh, an amazing designer. Yeah. And, and, I, and if you see his portfolio, he, I mean, he's, he's an underrated designer. Like he never put himself out as a designer. Like he's so amazing. He was humble. He was one of the most humble designers I think I ever met. And when I first met him in person, like I had no clue who he was or the legacy. And he doesn't, it's not like he brags about it. You know, some people, they walk in the room and they want you to know. And if you don't know, they walk away. And Michael wasn't like that. I think I met him at Typecraft or originally at like an AIJ LA uh, after party after the national conference. Rachel uh, brought him up uh, to me to introduce Michael. And uh, Rachel was like, if you want to know something about typography, Michael's a man to teach you. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I'm excited. When's the first class? And like shortly after, a couple weeks later, I think is when Rachel had extended the invite to the type ed classes uh, in downtown LA at General Assembly. And that's when I uh, really got to meet him, got to know him and, and learn the teachings and uh, understand typography in a whole nother way. The best thing that he did in type one is he shows you um, the actual metal casted type mm -hmm. and breaks down the anatomy of type and you know the way that we software uh, adjust type today is still based off of all of those things like letting and cap height and um, the base the baseline and the ascenders right um, the total height of the let uh, the character and, and the metal cast 
is the total height even the, uh, in the software because you don't see that invisible you see invisible space and you're like why is this thing not lining up or it's got extra space above and below it's like that's a metal cast type and no one ever tells you that when you pick up illustrator in design or even photoshop and you're trying to manipulate um typography to like fit into your design in some way and the fact that you know, Michael Stinson started with that as the ground, the foundation to teach you everything else about typography and how software interprets it and how you can adjust it and finesse things. Like it just broke it down in such a way that was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is fun. I can't wait to like get to designing the next thing, you know? So it re-inspires your design when you're burnt out. That was one of the best things about him is he just gets you inspired. Yeah. When, and that, they, when they were in downtown LA, one of the things that I noticed is that Michael had a, um, an actual like little box of like, you know, where the like little letters would go in. So the letter, the actual letters that would be in letterpress were in these things. So he was passionate about typography and we, you just talked about letting the reason why it's called letting is actually when you, they would actually take, when they were doing those, those layouts of, of those types and it was all backwards. So when they had to put the spaces in between, you know, the sentences, they would put strips of lead in it. So that's why they call it letting. So it's actually, it's all traces back. So it's like, it got me passionate about learning like stuff that I take for granted in a, in a computer program. Right. And, and he actually um, also taught me, uh, this is a, a great slide at, at a very a good time. Uh, he, so I, I'm not great at math. I'll be the first one. I, I, uh, I wish I would have had today's math because it, it, on computers and, learning 3D and, and uh, math like that, more visual. But um, he used to, you know, math plus typography equals good design. And he's 100% right because if, if, if your numbers are off, um, you know, it's going to look uh, clunky and it's like if things aren't lined up. And, but it's all, there's all like this, this math that goes to it. So uh, Rachel uh, Elnar, as you see here, and Michael, you know, taught this. Uh, a lot. Uh, Ross actually um, suggests a place that we talk about, the printmuseum.org, uh, which uh, I think is in, is it in Torrance or um, I know that it's, uh, I can't remember, a, Car a Carson maybe? Uh, but uh, it's, yeah, I remember going there uh, so many times. Um, and they, yeah, they have actually the printing presses that still yeah. run. They've got all the different types of uh, printing presses, letter presses that evolved throughout history that gave us modern printing techniques. Um, and they, each machine still runs and operates. They use lead, they use a uh, metal casted type. And if you visit the uh, print museum, they give you this wonderful tour uh, when they are open. I'm not sure if they're uh, running things now given the pandemic status um, but it would be cool if they had like limited capacity events uh, you know opening up I would definitely recommend the visit because you actually see um, where typesetting comes from you see you know why are these terms that you hear about like kerning tracking letting cap pipe baseline what are what do all those things mean um, and once you see it in person you start to connect the dots in ways that you never did before. And it just makes your workflow so much easier and smooth and more enjoyable. Um, and that quote of uh, like design plus math equals good design, that's so true. And that's how Michael taught. And he taught it in such a simple way that it didn't feel overwhelming. It didn't feel confusing like it was in math and algebra class or calculus class. It just felt simple and straightforward. So yeah. Yeah, so uh, hi, Sam. Thank you for joining hey, tonight. Um, Ross, thank you for this. It's in Carson, yeah, by the way. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so, so yeah, and and one of the things that, uh, I mean, I, I thought I was passionate about typography, um, and uh, it wasn't until I kind of found Type Ed that I kind of I found this great community, and that's how I met you, Mateo. Um, do, going into AIGA LA events, uh, going to type ed. I think, uh, one of the first events I went to was like Michael Dore. Uh, I think that's what, the way you pronounce his name is, you know, he was a, he was a branding guy and, and, um, and, uh, Michael had a, a class that was called Mark My Word. So it was like, it was kind of uh, branding based where they, you know, you can see the Marriott M in there and you could see, obviously see the Wendy's. Um, and, and just like kind of changing, you know, how these things, uh, how these words, 
would be typeset if we were to change around the lettering and 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 but you can see like you know I can instantly identify it because it's a very distinguishable marks and um, you know Michael's work I mean I, I remember just going to their website and just seeing how like amazingly like it was laid out you know and, and um, this all everything from down to their business cards were are like impeccably uh, typeset and everything and so yeah um, I mean, you can, see, uh, you, you can see he's using a ruler on the edge of his business card, and then he's giving you like various sizes of the letter E, uh, and it's like, and it's all in rhythmic scale. Yep. That was the thing. He was just sort of this musical genius with type, with type, um, and he he shared that knowledge. It wasn't like he hid it from you, um, and th that was the the beautiful thing is like you, he would show you these connections that are there. And you always work with, but you never know why they're there, right? And then he would reveal like how to play with that, um, and he would like just the mark my words, even like that that business card that looks like a debit card that was awesome. These these business cards playing with typography, um, they would just get you inspired and then like teach you how to do it too. Uh, and and yeah, the underlying principle was you know you know basic math and also. Uh, thinking about like how type was originally placed on the letterpress and it's just it's it's so cool it's just such a different way to approach design i i, I went to school all through uh westwood college and uh and did like this online uh accelerated course to and we learned graphic design everything digital like every little piece we learned was digital and it totally sort of separates itself from like the physical craft of design and letter and printing and uh, all, all of the things that you you miss out on. Uh, it, it, Michael brought that back into the classroom when taking like the type ed courses and it just felt like, whoa, it took my design education and uh, typography to another level, like just aspiring to a great greater levels. Yeah, and he was super proud of his like very young college students who would graduate and then um I, I believe one of them uh went to uh a very uh, very high level design agency design agency called pentagram and it was like he was like could not i mean that's that's like like um being a baseball coach and your your player goes and is in the ma uh, major leagues you know like it's getting drafted in the major league like first round first pick like that that's amazing and so i would have um you know I would have loved to have that opportunity. Uh, I didn't go to college. Um, and, uh, I said, but, uh, weirdly I have a 30 year career, which is, which is insane to, to even think about. But I think that if I would have had Michael's teaching when I was, you know, 18, I mean, I, I the world would have, I, you know, the world would have been mine. Um, and, uh, it's, but I was lucky enough to get, you know, in my obviously later years, still his his brilliance and how he thought about things and and we talked about uh indesign before and uh and an illustrator so like i i use those things every day i use photoshop every day like 18 hours a day so when he got me to actually rethink about how i was doing things uh type typographic uh, uh graphic wise so for my job i actually have to put out a a, a near 300 page PDF. So that's daunting, right? And keep that going. And I, I actually had an illustrator and it got, I, I actually ran out of artboards. Uh, that's when uh, you couldn't, you can only go to a hundred artboards. So I'm just like, I have to go to InDesign or, or something else. Or I got to figure this out. So he actually taught me how, um, how I could potentially do it just like a book. And um, so that's what I do. And I, and I, I switched uh, maybe five or six years ago. And I, I do that consistently now. Now that 280 page uh, PDF, I have to do it for five different regions, you know, and different <laughs> things. So it's like, yeah, I've created quite a monster for myself, but I couldn't have uh, tackled that if um, if it wasn't for his kind of mentality when it came to all this. Um, so do you, do, did you, when you took the class, uh, his mm. classes, like, like what, did you go back to work? and feel differently when 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 you uh, how you were approaching things 
I totally did. I, I, I had put something in front of Michael that I was working on at the time too. It was a how to instructional sheet. And I like asked him like, you know, look, I've been playing with this in InDesign. Something still doesn't look right. Like, can you take a look at this? And like right away, he was like, all you got to do is like, you know, switch this out for a condensed font because you're, you're running four columns on one uh, eight and a half by 11, and you're gonna make the room you need and be able to play with your your letting and your and your spacing and create a rhythm on the page. It's gonna be easier to read once you do that. Um, and I, like, I was so inspired, I went back to work. I just like jumped back into InDesign like the, as soon as I could, and I was just having fun. And I was reapproaching the software with this new knowledge from type ed. And I like things were just clicking like they had never clicked before. And um, I had taken quite a few courses um, on how to, you know, deep dive InDesign features and tools. Because as you know, InDesign is one of the deepest Adobe softwares. I mean, there are features upon features upon features on what you can do. Uh, managing text documents and playing with typography, embedding images, frames, uh, grep styles, all kinds of things. And it can be an overwhelming software, but the way that Michael sort of like taught this class and, and then also like gave me this like simple, just like approach to this problem that I couldn't figure out on my own, got me so excited to go back to opening up InDesign the next day. And uh, I just went right to town and like, I felt like so much better once I uh, reprinted it, proofed it and looked over that, uh, that instructional sheet. I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is it. This is, this is the final right here. Yeah, Sam says I love InDesign, and and I didn't yes. know that I loved it as much as I did. And one of the things that that uh, I found out through Michael is that, you know, like I, I was going in with kind of like maybe more of the Illustrator thing was what if I needed text somewhere I would make a box and put the text in there. If I needed text somewhere else, I'd make a box, put it there, or an element, I just kind of place it there. What I found out was Michael used one text box. And what he did was um, through his cursor, like he would uh, put the text in, but then he would put like symbols in there. He would put other things and then tab over. So it, it, and then you could create columns and stuff like that. My mind was blown. One text box. And he actually, I mean, uh, one of the type, I think it's the one of the, the boot camp that he used to run. And it was all, uh, all it was, it was a time version of like you do one task and they would stop the clock. They would do two tasks, stop the clock three the same task three times and basically it was all just to, he said you can um set a whole thing of type and all your character styles all your paragraph styles you know and it's it it's super fast and he just gets mic muscle memory and it was um it was so fascinating to see that and have like Rachel's in the back, like, like timing it and and uh Michael's and then you know just watching it was it was fascinating to, I was actually having fun because I've never been put through a kind of a friendly um, design challenge. Usually my design challenges are on the job. It's more like get this done by five o'clock basically. And it's like make magic and here's nothing and make it work. And, uh, but yes. it was, it was really great to have a, a, a fun design challenge. Um, and uh, Rachel, look at that joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us, Rachel. Hey, hey! Welcome, Rachel. So, so one of the one of the things also, like, um, and I'm gonna pull back up, uh, pull it back up. This, uh, I'm gonna my shared screen here, but yeah. So, so I, I just love that, and and Michael and Rachel made it so fun. I said I got excited about design again because it, I was making beautiful things, whereas I thought I was, you know. And and one of the things that you could you could say like, hey, Michael, what like what makes this not work. And he would just go, Oh, you might want to think about this. And I'm like, come on. Like, I, it, it can't be that easy. Like he, he just picked it out right away. Is it, it was like, he, like he just had a sixth sense and, um, <laughs> yeah, six sense for type. Design. <laughs> oh, it, absolutely. Absolutely. Crazy. I mean, just like all this type of stuff that was, uh, it's so, it's so beautiful. And, uh, I, I just love the grid life. He just, everything that he designed was so amazing. Oh um yeah he, he made things on the grid that would just say like, you know you wouldn't even like well, how do you it's like how did you do that how did you even think to make this it is it, crazy and the the way that he approached like you said like 
giving you those friendly challenges that made you sort of rethink the problem in a new way, but keeping it fun and, and easy to approach. Like it just made going back to work and, and working in the design software, like InDesign, so much more enjoyable. Like there was one book that I was working on after I took the type ed courses, thanks to Rachel and thanks to Michael, I went through this like a hundred page book making document and completely re flowed and reformatted my styles with the knowledge from the type ed course had the the deck that uh, Michael Stinson taught with open while I was going in and checking my styles and being like okay is there style consistency uh, do I have the right letting what's my font size it's not just 12 point right it's, it's 12 over 14 or 12 over 15 like having a bare minimum of three points so it can breathe uh, snapping things to the ba uh, the baseline grid, uh, mm -hmm. making sure that your baseline grid is is repeating all the way down. Again, having that one text box that flows through the whole document versus an InDesign approaching it the Illustrator way and drawing like a box for a heading and a box for a paragraph and a yeah. box for this paragraph and a box for an image. Like, no, you can keep all that in one uh, one single text frame, yeah. flow it through the doc, and using styles, you're going to get so much like flexibility and consistency for like dragging things in uh, and making new uh, pages out of that real quick. So it was just one of those things that just, it was like a creative ramp. And that's why I totally get the name Rachel Ramp Creative. Cause yeah. like every time, you know, you've talked to uh, Michael, it was like, you got that creative ramp energy that just was like, all right, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and he actually uh, got me to use uh, grep. If, if you're not familiar with it, do you know what grep is? Yeah. Um, some people may not know what it is. It's actually, you know, it's basically these these commands where you can actually find things in the copy, um, and it's it's daunting. It's it's like like learning like action scripting, and it's like you know super <laughs> super daunting. But um, you know, it, it's like uh, finding multiple return to single return. You know, it's like. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I don't know. I don't don't even know what that means. I should know what that means, like, but I don't. And then it's super simple. And then he would run his type through all that, and basically taking out the extra spaces that you don't need. So I go, yeah. that makes sense if you're doing a book, right? You, want, you don't want to do that page by page, but just like this, that higher uh, level of of thinking. Uh, as a and I was a professional, so like I felt like I should have known this already. But like, you know, so I can imagine being 18 years old, it's like super daunting. Like you haven't even applied this yet, you know? So it's like those two worlds. So I, I could enjoy it as a professional as well. And, um, and um, you know, one of the things that, that this, this is really special to me because if I'm not mistaken, I think um, Rachel might um, uh, confirm this. I, I believe I was one of only two people that took uh, Michael's brand apprenticeship course, which was a 12 week course, which I think they only gave out very, uh, for a limited time. And, and, and it was a 12 week course. And we basically, we, we created a, a branding guide. So it was everything from like, you know, we created, uh, three, uh, logo brands and we did all the research. Uh, we did all the, um, you know, color iterations. We did, you know, what type was going to go with your symbol and, you know, flushing us all out. So I basically took this whole course um, and and basically learned how to research because uh, that's why I always push research. Because um, if you don't research your project and what you're actually trying to make, you're not going to come up with very good. You're going to kind of like stab in the dark, but you're, you're not going to land on that mark. Well, when, after doing this course, I started making three distinct brand marks that that any i would have been proud to show because usually there's like a red herring in there there's like two that you like one you like that you know it's supposed to be it the other yeah. one it's like okay i'd be okay with that but then the red herring which is like i hope they don't choose this but i know they're going to choose this but he actually got me to you know do the research up front like two weeks of research and actually learn about everything and or, or at least a week um and but at least kind of like thinking about it kind of higher level uh, word association and really made me start thinking about how I was approaching my branding projects. So I felt in the end that I could actually, instead of just doing a logo, which you can get on Fiverr um, and actually undercut the whole industry, I was making a branding package that I could do for Huntington Hospital or um, a, a major brand. So I felt that I had that confidence and I, I, I owe this, you know, to Michael and Rachel, like, like for 
given me not only the, 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 the confidence, but also like, I felt like I had the knowledge to do something bigger and better. Um, and, and, and go in and it's like, uh, I can not go in sheepishly, like not saying like, Oh, you know, like, you know, is this okay? I'm just like, no, this is the way it should be. I've done all the research up front. I've done all the stuff. This is what it should be. And it gave me that confidence. And, uh, Michael, um, is, is a superhero in my book. Um, and, uh, as baseball season winds up, we, we used to love baseball. So, uh, we used to uh, geek out. We used to go to baseball games and talk typography. So, uh, <laughs> we, we were total geeks when it came to that. So, uh, love you, Michael. Oh, so much love for Michael. And I think this is a good moment to uh, sort of wrap up, say lastly, a uh, few announcements. So the reason that we brought everyone together tonight is because um, Michael Stinson had, oh, well, next Thursday, October 22nd, Type Thursday LA, we're going to be doing the same format. We're killing Zoom because we are sick of Zoom. So we'll be doing this live stream format. You can find us in the same place. Uh, on Facebook Live. In addition to that, we'll be on other platforms like YouTube uh, as well. So keep an eye out. Sign up on the Eventbrite. There is a link to sign up. Um, I think Michael had dropped it into the chat earlier. And also, we are doing a fundraiser in honor of Michael Stinson. Um, Michael had donated this uh, the annual report collection to the Letterform Archive. And to be able to maintain this massive letter set and go and put it away in the archive, you've got to pay for the man hours to do that. Um, so we're raising some funds to try and support the letter form archive uh, to be able to maintain this collection that Michael donated. Um, it's an amazing collection. It's the annuals reports. So anything for uh, fiscal year documentation, it was one of the big projects that Michael worked on. And it's one of the things that will teach you everything you need to know about setting type and numbers. <laughs> Every curveball in typography will be thrown at you in the annual report. Um, so we're super excited to be fundraising. Um, we have some fun things to look out for. Right now we're fundraising through Eventbrite. So donations are welcome um, to get in the door. It's basically $5. If you can't give five, you can choose your own donation. If you can give more, you can choose more. Um, so early birds get free access. And uh, if you just wanna come and be a part, you can email me at uh, losangeles at typethursday.org or reach out to me on any of the social platforms you see me on. Um, or Michael, let us know you wanna get in and we'll definitely make an arrangement. We'll, we'll see you there. We're looking for presenters as well. If you're uh, someone who has work in progress, if you worked with Michael, learned from Michael, and you have uh, a, a work that you'd like to share that was influenced by Michael Stinson, we wanna see your work. Present next Thursday. Um, submit it to us. Uh, again, that email is losangeles at typethursday.org and we'll get you lined up to be presenting uh, next Thursday in the same live stream format here. Anything else, Michael? Uh, no, that's, that's it. I mean, uh, we definitely would love to see you um, a week from today. And then we're also going to continue it into um, November, uh, right? November. Uh, the same Michael yep. Stinson uh, fundraising. Uh, and then we'll actually be in December. We're, we're thinking about doing the December one. Uh, also here on Streamer. So, so no more Zoom. Uh, for, we're going to do this live, so everybody can participate um, in, in the in the chat. Um, the, no obligation. You don't have to go into a room. You don't have to sign up. Yep. But we are looking for that engagement of how we can raise funds um, and really make a difference in this. And uh, yeah, that's uh, we'd and love to see you there. Michael Stinson, this amazing person, this amazing human, uh, to borrow the words of one of our visitors earlier. Um, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for the shout out too. This tribute has meant so much to me. So to be able to just do this to and share the knowledge and share the love. And uh, yeah, we're thinking of y'all. We're thinking of Michael in this moment and uh, we wanna honor him all month long and through November as well. Uh, so we'll see you all pr soon. I think this is a good place to wrap, Michael. Yeah, so let me end with uh, just a short little video. Uh, but remember, uh, so this is gonna be up on Facebook. We're actually, uh, we actually created a YouTube uh, channel as well. We're gonna be on Twitch. So we'll get that all out to you um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, actually, Sarah says uh, no more Zoom with the stupid backgrounds. Uh,
But uh, let me share this video and we're going to bid you good night and uh, thank you so much. Art directors and creative directors and designers have to um, cast type in that role of that movie. But when you cast uh, actors in a movie, there's lots of variables and details that are discussed. Just like type has variables and details that are discussed to use and how to go about laying it out and how, it, how they interact with other visuals or other actors like in the film industry. How would Meryl Streep play off of Jack Nicholson and so on? You know, so type does that with visuals, right? So we try to get them to think more about the type in this role, rather than just going, you know, pick a font and set it. <laughs>